Welcome everybody to another edition of Behind the Scenes Live. That's BTS Live for short. I'm Marty Patton. And as always, I have my partner in this endeavor, Mark Rogers. Hey, Mark, how are you? I'm doing well, Marty. How's it going? Very good, very good. We're. Uh, I know we talk weather a lot. Let me just adjust my levels a little bit here. I know we talk uh, weather a lot on this show. So now we're almost into May and we're getting into some, I think, I think the snow is done. The cold weather hopefully is done. It's a little chilly at night, you know, but you know, it's nice to, I'm going to have to put the screens back in the windows and probably put the air conditioning in and uh, who knows how that's going to be during the summer. You'll, you know, it'll be interesting during the summer of these shows. With the, with I wait the, from like September, October to this time of year to not be cold, to be able to shut the heat off open windows whenever you want to and just feel warm feel good feel the sun feel the heat i'm just like in the wrong place i've been i've been repositioned geographically uh that, that does not uh does, does not um uh, necessarily uh accommodate um what makes me feel good doesn't yeah so yeah it's funny, it's funny. i keep telling misty i mean uh uh, and not only for the weather, but also, I mean, I'm, we're in, both in Connecticut, and you know how it is here. It's not cheap to live here, and I have my own business, so, you know, I mean, I could see myself, you know, eventually moving somewhere else that may be a little more weather and tax-friendly, <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see how that's, that'll be a whole nother saga, so yeah. we'll see how that goes. But anyways, I um, want to welcome everybody to the show today. Uh, today's show, as I mentioned off the top in the pre-show, is a continuing discussion. Uh, this is the third and final part of uh, Mark and his um, journey, really, in creating his show, The Mark and Macy Show. Uh, it's a blab, uh, done on blab primarily, uh, although we'll see if that continues. You know, uh, hopefully, the, you know, again, the stability of the platform matters. But, but you know, again, we talked a lot about, you know, why he, you know, chose to do create this show his interest in sports, how he chose his co-host, Macy, you know, chemistry came up as a very important topic, uh, and all the kind of journey up to this point. But today, we want to talk about, and I know Mark wants to talk about kind of the future going forward, uh, some of the bigger plans, some of the goals, uh, and, and also we'll make this relevant to everyone here as far as those who may want to do the same thing, you know, and some of the uh, experiences both of us have had uh, in creating shows and, and, uh, and some of the challenges. I mean, we talked, Mark, a lot about, we taught this in the past, the 90-10 rule, I call it, where 90% of the work happens before the show, nobody ever sees it, and the 10% is what you're seeing right now. And, uh, and I'm sure you, working, you know, at ESPN, you know all about that, contingency plans and planning and all that stuff, and same thing with your own show, planning content, planning production. I mean, it's it's certainly a challenge. So I'm going to hand it off to you, Mark. Um, kind of continue that discussion, and I know you wanted to talk about, you know, kind of looking now you up to this point, and uh, and kind of looking forward and where you see the show head, both from a content and production standpoint, and kind of your big goals. No, nothing's too too big, you know. But but I know you have some very big goals with this. So, Marty, before we dive into the future, I'm actually going to play off of something that you said about the, the blab situation because there's an operational concern and there have been other concerns in the past. And I'll, I'll let you know what uh, I came across this past week that makes it uh, uh, a decision-making process when you choose a platform. Marty talks about owning your content, and that's where we ultimately all need to get if we're going to take this seriously is to own the platform and the content rather than relying on the service because we've all experienced uh, if you're watching this on blab the the community and the benefits of blab there have been operational downfalls and the latest one that hit us this past week marty and i think i texted this to yep. you is that the uh, i found out that the individual stream so macy's at her location i'm at my location they they must be recorded separately Obviously, since they're streaming in separately. Now you're talking and about now. now you're ta out, are you talking about on Blab? Come, both of you coming in and recording each part separately. Is that what you're saying? Or so when Blab sent me the file, mm -hmm. I posted to YouTube. 
uh, and watched it on YouTube. I should probably go back and watch it on Blab and see how it looks there. When I post it on YouTube, the, the, the streams aren't in sync. So our individual streams are in sync. There's no issue with lip flap. Uh, the, so, so the audio is in sync with, with our video. But our individual feeds are not in sync, and it takes a while to discover this. When, when I first started watching, I thought, wow, that's kind of an odd react. Like, she would react a, a few seconds slow, mm -hmm. and then she started talking over me at the end, and I didn't remember that, and then it happened again. And I, I discovered that the streams were running at different times. They were th maybe three to five seconds off, so she's consistently cutting me off. So it's almost it, like a, a one of those satellite delays. You, know, you see those uh, or mac microwave delays. You see the reporter in the field. Is it sort of like that where there's well, a... Well, not, not exactly because in that instance, the reporter or the anchor is pitching to the reporter and the reporter is delayed, but the entire broadcast is delayed. In this, mine's running and then I'm not done with my sentence and where... When it, was, when it was broadcasted live, she's obviously waiting for me to finish my sentence, and then she responds. On there, her feed is, is, is uh, what was played out before mine. So she's talking over me. That's she's starting weird. to talk before I'm done. Yeah, that's really, that's really, now did you notice that in the live or just the recording? No, it's not live. That's what I'm saying. It was recorded the, the rec because when we were doing it live, it was fine. Right. And then you watch the recording, and she's constantly cutting me off at the end of my sentences, and it makes it look like she's cutting oh, me boy. off. And then when I pitch to her, there's a delay. She's, she's waiting. When, in fact, when it was live, she wasn't waiting to respond to me or, or me to her, I guess. But boy, anyway, what's, what's obvious is her cutting me off. Yeah, that's very strange. And that kind of brings up a uh, lesson that we've talked about. You know, we talked about it, Mark, offline. This is something that we'll have to kind of work together on your show. But, you know, we talked about this in the show previously. The uh, Again, Lab is using very cutting-edge technology. WebRTC is evolving. Uh, how they're doing the recordings, I am not smart enough to know. I don't know uh, the coding at all. Um, but it goes to, it kind of leads to the obvious point where the more you can take control of your processes, the better it is. I mean, you know, again, I'm not here to make a judgment call on, on Blab or what they are doing, what they're capable of, what challenges they have in coding and, and making all this stuff happen. It is, comp trust me, you know, it's positioned as being easy, but it is tremendously complex, you know, on their end. Uh, so with that said, I mean, if you're doing a show that you're dependent on the recording, that's why, you know, you hear myself, you hear Stephen Haywood, a lot of the pro production pros say that it's so, so important to, if you can work toward that, um, position where you're able to take as much control of the production process that includes recording your final output as you can, you know, not only for you know, we talk a lot about backups, not only from backups, but as Mark is, is referring to here, you know, he is using Blab as the production platform, which, you know, makes it very easy to do a show. And then they had the built-in recording, but it's tough when, you know, if the recording's not gonna cooperate, you almost gotta find out, maybe is there another process that you can go to? So it, I know it's complex, but yeah, Mark, that you raised a very, very good point. That's a really good illustration is where you have to kind of work toward you know, alternate ways of doing things. I mean, again, you know, you work, in, you know, in, pro you know, professional television, you know, ESPN, and, you know, obviously they do everything there, you know. Uh, they're not relying on a, on a third-party platform to do any kind of recording. But, yeah, I mean, you raise a good point. So what do you do? And I think, you know, you've come up with ways to use, all. you know, again, you got to think about alternate platforms, I think it's a mistake. I think if you completely rely on one single platform to do everything, you wanna have alternate plans. I mean, you, you've used Google Hangouts in the past. I mean, you probably switch back and forth. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a tough one, what you're running into, you know? Yeah, so on my YouTube channel, Mark Rogers TV, I'm using Google Hangouts exclusively and have for uh, just about six years. So the Mark and Macy show, originated on Google Hangouts because that was the platform I knew. And uh, then, then uh, Marty discovered Blab 
and it, it makes for a difficult decision at, at this point. So we're 20 shows in, it makes for a difficult decision because operationally, we can count on Google Hangouts. Yeah, there have been a few snafus here and there, but I've recorded like 2,000 videos on there, and I've got at least a 99% success rate. So Google Hangouts seems to be extremely stable. So those are the operational benefits there, but the community involved in Blab and what we've experienced in regards to live viewership on Blab versus Google Hangouts can't be compared. Uh, I, I made the illustration a couple of weeks ago that I that I had three or four pretty heavy hitting uh, bloggers and broadcasters on a Google's Hangout and they they hit the pavement uh, publicizing a particular show and we could still only muster like 35 or 40 live viewers yep. versus you know, uh, even with Macy and I only being on there for five or six weeks a couple of weeks ago we had 260 live viewers come through so the community's built in versus what we experience on Google Hangouts but we have to right now the operational concern for me is is much more paramount yeah i mean you, you raise a really good point there mark i mean and i think that goes to the fact that not every platform is going to be good at every single thing i mean a lot of this stuff you're mixing community building activities with technical with content with discovery and all that stuff and and mark you bring up a very good point about blab i mean to me one of if you're going to go advantages disadvantages pros and cons one of the big time advantages of blab and one thing they've done really really well is community aspect from the very beginning the discovery was really good in the beginning you can see all the shows it was almost like a kind of a grid format where you can see everything available you can pop in pop out and again i've met a ton of people on blab uh, great people um, and got to know and make that connection they've done that extremely well now recently they've had their challenges i think as they scale scale the service and i think they're trying to do better with search and you know and it's again you know you could have an argument as far as you know do you like the old system where you saw everything versus the new system where you see things that are tailored to your interests or they you know they try to you know improve the search you know i think the jury's still out there you know i i certainly have some more challenges now than i did in the past but the community aspect yeah you're right mark they, they nailed that perfectly versus Google Hangouts. I mean, YouTube is huge, you know, and just to discover, they do have a live page, but it only shows so many. It's just not, it's just not the same community there. And that makes it tough when you're doing live shows, you know, this whole, you know, emergence of live streaming, you know, from last, you know, starting last year, kind of this new wave with Meerkat and Periscope launched, everything kind of came together. That's the big, that's the thing that attracts everyone is you get that immediate engagement. Here, that's why we go to Blab. I mean, we don't use Blab as a production platform itself, but we use the embed feature, the drop-in feature. We love the chat room here. Um, you know, when we launched the show, it was, it was strictly a Blab show before we decided to take the production in-house. But again, the reason why we still come here is because community is great. And same thing with you. I mean, you get that instantaneous feedback, especially the the style of show you do, you're doing sports talk, which is an engaging style of talk, right, Mark? I mean, you need that engagement, keeps you kind of fueled, that, that energy level up. And that's a huge thing, you know, and, and it talks to using multiple platforms, right? So while Blab is really good at community, you know, they're a startup. They're new, they're small, and they're running into challenges like any other startup would as far as scaling and, and trying to develop the technology versus Google who has all the resources in the world you know i know people complain about how difficult it is but it, it does work it's pretty it's and i think it's gotten better technically but the discovery is not that great and the community is not that great so yeah it's a tough one right mark yeah it has been and and i've had my issues with the google hangouts and youtube in the past in regards to all of that being um transitioned together at one point and then kind of building things out without letting you know and changing things and changing interfaces but the reliability uh, considering it's free and this is something we all need to understand from time to time and and uh, remind ourselves that these platforms are free so uh, the, the reliability is extremely high 
and, and I have no concerns there. It's just it's very difficult for anybody to find you on Google Hangouts yeah. and for, for you to build that community, and you don't have the, it just doesn't have the format for the immediate interaction and feedback. So that's why we've liked uh, Blab so much. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you, Mark. I mean, uh, you know, the the whole um, the challenges thing, and the and again, the, the community that's a big that's a big one, you know. And I haven't seen anybody other than Blab in this whole live streaming community space in the same style where you can have multiple people on the screen at once and make it very easy to have those kind of live video based conversations. I haven't seen a platform frankly nail it as well as blab now my hope is that they're able to kind of plow through the the technical challenges and and scale out and build out i mean that's not again that's not easy i think people have a lot of expectations as far as performance i mean mark you raise a very good point about it being free and that should be kind of a a signal to everybody anytime you use a free platform whether it's blab whether it's google hangouts whether it's periscope a lot of these services are free to use and you know the business model there is usually advertising or maybe even some paid level of service at an enhanced level of service but i think you have to realize again everyone needs to make money you know and i don't think that's a necessarily dirty word i think a lot of people think oh they don't need to yeah everyone believe me if it's a business <laughs> that's the number one you have to make money i mean otherwise you're not a business first of all you're not a business if you're not making money and second of all you're not going to be in business very long if you don't figure out a way to make money you know you a lot of people talk about you can have investors but those investors want you to make money it's like it's like a public corporation i mean those investors are i i saw um gary vanderchuk who's a you know a well-known uh marketer he has a you know huge agency and he talks i heard him uh, a keynote that he gave one time uh watching this video a few weeks ago and he talks about this where he's a, he's an investor and some guy had a failed startup where he went to him so oh you know went to gary said oh you know what uh hey, gary said oh don't you know try you know keep plowing away you'll you'll do better next time he goes he goes yeah what are you gonna do you know and gary kind of is like wait a minute you know you have my money i mean it's not like i'm giving away the money for free you know you should be concerned you know <laughs> that you're not making money it's not like something like oh water under the bridge and forget about it and go on to the next project you know so i think that this is the challenge for a lot of people don't think about it but these companies need to make money right in order to provide better and better service and to put the development you know effort behind it to get better you know so i mean again i think it comes down to and mark you know this and, and you've done a nice job with this do not build your entire house on one platform if you're dependent on one thing i don't care what it is youtube which is very reliable do not build everything on one platform. It's it's imperative. And be familiar with backup plans. We talk about backup plans, right? And at least you know you can you've switched back and forth when you have trouble. You go to a different platform for that show and it's really about your content and how you're presenting it to your audience, right? All right. So I guess we're gonna dark dive into the Mark and Macy show. Yep. I'm still waking up here. So I'm <laughs> gonna I'm gonna wake myself up and get into it here. Those overnights at ESPN, boy, I tell ya, you, you know Marty. So uh, I made this comment last week, so I want to get it out there before we dive into this, that this is a community deal. So a lot of you that are chiming in, that are uh, having a discussion on the side, you guys have areas of expertise yourself. So this is not me saying, hey, this is the gospel truth and this is how you need to build this out. I need to hear from you. I know Marty's going to have some perspective on uh, where we'd like to be as a show as well so this kind of speaks to our show bts live as well but uh using again the model the show i do with macy golder so you can check that out on blab 645 every thursday night special edition this week because of some other uh scheduling concerns and things coming up uh tuesday night will be on at nine o'clock eastern time so so we talked about in recent weeks, and this conversation has been kind of strewn from episode to episode, but the, the original intent was to talk uh, 
the the creation of the show part one and the launch of the show selecting a co-host building a brand and then the second part was okay where do we stand now what's what's going on right now what are the purpose and goals and initiatives going on right now and then this one's the fun one this is pie in the sky what's the goal so I think we all wrestle with this that that are ambitious and want to build something you got to be grounded. You got to know where you are right now. You got to know your limitations. You have to know, okay, what's the next step? Because if you try to do too much at one time, you're not going to do anything well. You need to say, okay, this is paramount. I, I can take on maybe these four projects at once, and this one's the most important. This is two, this is three, this is four. But if you try to take everything on, you, you can come up with a list of 37 things that you need to do. Yeah, let me interject something real, real quick here, Mark. You know, you raise a, a really good point there. I mean, we talked a lot about the difference between, you know, planning and you plan to your heart's content and never start. And you kind of see two different two different steps here where you want to get to a certain point where you, you want to plan and get something together, but then you want to start it. And then I think you're kind of talking about the whole idea of evolving as you go and not looking at... You know, a lot of people, I think, look at what we're doing. We're doing a you know higher level production. We didn't start like this overnight. You know, we we teamed up and we got this done. And you know, but it's all about kind of building as you go. If you have big goals, certainly have the big goals. But it's probably going to take you a while to get there. But that's kind of the fun of it, right? Yeah, definitely. So this is the vision. So let's talk about the vision. And I have some big plans here and we will do our best to get there. So how long is it gonna take? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So let's start with a website. Marty often talks about having a landing page, a destination spot. So the hub versus the spokes in the wheel. So the hub should be your website. So right now, Macy and I have a, and I wish I had the technical word for it because Marty could probably help me out here. Mark and Macy show dot webs dot com. So that not being a, I don't want to say not a legitimate website, but but what am I going for here, yeah. Marty? Where well, you're going for the URLs, right? So you're probably going to want to eventually get something that's a little simpler and yes. do a redirect, possibly. If you're like you're using a website builder right now, you're yes. using webs dot com, and and again, you know, it's probably not where you're going to end up you know, long term, but we talk about this, you know, you're, you at least started something and then you can always evolve as you go. I mean, you've, you've Squarespace before, the idea is to get something going and then evolve it. But yeah, you're talking about a redirect. So that would be something that, in a, in a sub, like you're using a subdomain there. So you got, you know, um, markandmacy.webs.com. So yeah, that, that's what I was looking yeah. for there. The, uh, the subdomain. So that's what we've got going right now. That is obviously not the goal. We, we need to have a website and a URL that people can find readily when they connect the name of the show to bam. That's where I want to go for the website. So right now, markandmacyshow.webs.com will become something else i don't think we could find mark and macy i think that was taken oh i bet we we have to talk offline there's other ways that you can do it with um maybe not a dot com but maybe there's another extension so the website being first and foremost paramount want it to be professional want it to be inclusive want it to be uh, have a distinct brand strategy when people go on your website are they seeing what you're projecting or wanting to project, whether that's casual, whether that's highly professional, whether that's technical, what, whether it's your personality, whether you want to kind of break barriers and, and, and um, push the envelope, whatever you want that to be, that website, that look at that website and the functionality of it should say your brand. So that's where we want to get. The, the concept should make sense and should be akin to your brand. Uh, so, so that's what we're going to look at there. We, we want to be interactive, and that's another reason why we've really jumped on Blab and really taken advantage of that and enjoy that process, polls and contests. We, we want to get people involved there. We want this thing to be user-friendly, functional, uh, very attractive website. So the website, that's, that's going to be uh, very important. Social media. So right now, there's no Facebook for us. There's Twitter. We've got a Twitter. We've got uh, a YouTube channel. 
So a Facebook- now, now, Mark, are you thinking about maybe? What are you thinking about? Are you thinking about? What are you thinking about in Facebook? Maybe a group well, or a page or? See, see, this is where I need your help because <laughs> all I know is what I all I know is what I'm involved in currently and what I see you doing, uh, and a few other people. So for me, that what I've seen us do here on Facebook with a Facebook group is the model for me. So yep. I would answer that. That's what I want, but maybe that's not the best for what well, we maybe like to maybe do. it's like another we talk you talk I think you you said it perfectly, you know, spokes in the wheel, right? You have your hub and uh and fa a Facebook group can be one of the spokes among many. You know, where you know you can cuz again, I don't think you can ignore Facebook. It's it's a huge platform huge community out there and uh yeah so it could be a spoken i know in our group i mean we kind of restarted it a while back and we'll put the link up i know brad's been posting it um like a madman in the comments <laughs> uh, which he's been doing great with but um but if you search bts live show on face on facebook uh you're more than welcome to join uh what i find about the groups mark is that especially for a show like yours is it's a lot of opinion, a lot of subjective uh, discussion. And Facebook, what's great about a group is that you can carry over that. And you do your show one time a week, you know, maybe about an hour a week, and you can, can kind of continue that discussion with the community. And really, it's great for community building, you know, getting one on one with people and finding out who is watching, what they are all about, what they want to see. We've done that in our group as well in the past. But yeah, I mean, I think that would be a great fit for you guys. So right now we're on Twitter, and uh, even our interaction there isn't what it should be or needs to be at some point. But we've, we've kind of come to the conclusion that we're going to produce a show each week, and we're going to continue on Twitter. We're going to uh, invite really good guests, which we've had. And we're gonna we're gonna take this kind of in steps. So we're not gonna beat ourselves up because our Twitter page isn't what we want it to be, yep. and uh, we're not gonna take it down because we don't want it. Uh, we want it to be uh, fully fledged and running and consistently posted to and all that. It's there. Uh, we we post when we can, uh, and obviously we we have some great contacts. So we're not going to take any steps back, even though it's been somewhat frustrating in, in terms of building some of these platforms out. YouTube and Twitter being the the two most yeah. And let, uh, and I'll I'll just make a quick comment about the Twitter page. Even even if you set up a Facebook group, this is all stuff. I mean, for folks that you know are watching us here on Blab or maybe watching the um, HD feed. Uh, social media is a long, long game. I and mean, Mark, you know, when you first started really getting involved, when you started doing YouTube videos five or six years ago, you really didn't have a lot of social presence on Twitter at all. And, and you built your Twitter one person at a time, one relationship at a time. And, you know, when it, a lot of people, I think, get confused with numbers and followers and just building up numbers and kind of vanity metrics and... While on the surface, like like a resume, it may look good. It may, you know, people may be attracted to have a conversation with you, but it doesn't get you, it, it doesn't convert to anything, really, whether it's it's a relationship or whether you're, you're selling a product or a service or whatever you happen to be doing, it doesn't convert. It just maybe, it may be as a conversation to but even that's kind of fading. I mean, Mark, you know, it's more about the quality. I mean, if you have, Five, five, say if you're into video production or you want to get on air, right? And we've had this discussion before where you have five followers and your dream is to work on air somewhere. And one of your followers and that you have a relationship with is the president of ESPN and you have a relationship with that person, then your five followers are pretty valuable. <laughs> Right, you don't have a million followers. You, you just need the one right follower, you yeah. know, that you strike that relationship up with, right? And over time, I mean, you've seen it on your Twitter account. Over time, you build that up. If you do it the right way, it's going to be high quality all the way. Same thing with Facebook groups or whatever. But yeah, it's 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 you're talking to yourself for a little while. But the other thing I would I would advise, and I know you have this um, challenge, is time. You only have so many hours in the day, right? So you're trying to trying to devote as much as you can you know i would say to folks out there watching 
it's very, very important that you engage on a regular basis. You have to not only post your content, but look for opportunities to engage unsolicited. So, so you jump in on those conversations. If you have something to offer, reply. You know, um, for us, video production, right? If I see someone struggling, you know, I could I could offer a reply. Oh, I see that you know you might be having difficulty with the, you know selecting a microphone or whatever it happens to be, or you know, or with this video camera setting or whatever it is. You know, maybe I can help. You know, would, would you like me to take a look? You know, and you can start that conversation. Um, same thing in the Facebook groups and anything like that. And then over time, you build that trust, you build that relationship. And again, it's it's a long game. It's like it's like in real life. It doesn't just because it's online doesn't it's no shortcut. You know, it just takes time. And I think in this environment, Mark, you know, everything's instant, and it's just not how it is. I, you know, and you've seen that with your own Twitter account. Yeah. And, and that was something that you preached to me from day one. Quality followers, quality engagement, consistent posting, consistent engagement. And, and when I say consistent posting, uh, letting other people, letting other people promote your brand, letting them promote um, your, your content and not bombarding and beating people over the head with your content. You know, my, my thought out of the gate was, Okay, I, I just produced this video. It's pretty damn good. I, I'm going to get this thing out there like every 10 minutes. And Marty's like, whoa, one time, put it out there one time, let your audience, let your relationships move it on from there. And uh, yeah, when, when I look at my followers, uh, I'm at 1,500 right now. So mm -hmm. depending on your perspective, I talk to people and they're like, wow, you got 1,500 followers. Obviously, we see people out there with, a hundred thousand followers yeah so, I, and i just want to interject real quick i just saw a comment uh from steve dotto in the uh in the blab comments there uh asking about the uh i think he's been away from um blab for a while but uh and there's been a lot of changes but asking about how we have our youtube feed in blab kind of embedded and we're not actually in blab um, and it's a, it's a new drop-in feature, Steve. Uh, you can actually drop in YouTube links. There's several other services that they've coded for where when you drop in that link, I think SlideShare is one, where you drop that link and you get the full large, it takes up the, the top half of the screen where it'll make it big. And since we do our show, I use a TriCaster, you know, I do all my production here and then I broadcast it out. So not only am I going to YouTube live, I'm also going to six other CDNs live um, through a aggregation service. And this was always this was the best way to get in the Blab. So not only am I getting an HD signal in Blab, uh, it's not causing any additional resources, and everyone gets to see it in full HD. Now the only downside is there's there's about a 15 second delay, 15 to 30 seconds I think. It really depends on YouTube. So as I'm as you're seeing the content coming out on YouTube, I'm seeing the comments in delay. So that's the only little thing. Um, no, no, no worries, Steve. Um, that's a really good question because I think other people might be wondering as well. Um, but but it works out well because the, you can see the large video format. And if you have the capability of doing your own production, it's a great way to do it. And and again, we just go on Blab in this fashion when we're live. I also stream out our shows on replay on btslive.com in a 24 seven reel. So I'm, I'm kind of treating it like a network. That's kind of what I'm developing here. So thank, that's a great question, Stephen. Don't think that you're, you're blabjacking at all. I, I appreciate the question. So Mark, um, sorry to, but I, I think that was an important question to answer. So um, I didn't mean to derail you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, and just to, to wrap up the Twitter part, a uh, portion of this is that uh, you, you finally got through to me in regards to the quality of the followers and the engagement and 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 the long process involved. So I can look at my following right now and feel good about it. It's not at the number I would like it to be at 1,500, but I can look at it and see that it's generally got a high percentage of quality people involved that are entrepreneurs that are in the broadcasting or blogging business legitimately uh, that are that are very sports minded people that have followings that that have platforms themselves uh, 10 or 15 NFL players major league baseball players and, and uh, so forth so 
the the following again the the size not what i want it to be the quality uh per followers is pretty strong so so that's that's good so we want to get to that place in terms of numbers getting back to the the, the mark and macy show here so just again the social media i'm hitting on the big ones the facebook the twitter the youtube uh, not necessarily being a social media platform, but I'll throw it in there. You bring up an email list, Marty. Yep. So that's something we've talked about at times. I'm something that uh, that I can gain either even further education on of you, uh, you know, helping us with that. Yeah, aspect. And, and before we'll, we'll, let's, we'll, we should get into that a little bit. But before you, uh, you didn't mention Snapchat and I, I will mention it here. Um, it's not new, but I think that this year, 2016, over the past year i think it's gotten some momentum so that might be something that um you know i know it's if you haven't been on it i know it's confusing but i think it's something to experiment with uh and certainly mark we can talk offline about that but i know it's another network um but it's completely different the way that it operates versus a lot of these other social networks so you know again it's a time factor right mark it's um you know it's just engagement i mean it's a a lot of it comes down to time and patience you know, when you're building this stuff out, I mean, just finding time to engage with people is tough. But, um, but yeah, I mean, again, these are spokes in the wheel. And, and then you mentioned email, the, uh, the email <laughs> part of things. And I think that's another area that people forget um, how important that is. So, so in um, terms of the big picture vision, so that's how we started this out. This is where we eventually want this show uh, to be, and a lot of this can kind of parallel with what Marty and I are doing and where we see BTS Live going. So I've kind of gone around the periphery with social media and a website. Let's talk about the show itself. So would like it to be a first rate technically. Right now, it's not, uh, but want it to be first rate technically, operationally, the mics, the lighting, the sets, uh, multi-camera shoots, effects, graphics, music, um, innovations like that to get to that point, to have somebody else uh, directing the show so we can be free to produce and host and, uh, you know, take care of that portion of the show and have somebody else direct the show. It's, 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 it's funny you bring that up. I mean, uh, I think a lot of people, uh, and, I'll, and I'll speak to the Blab audience, uh, because that's a platform where a lot of people start out. It's very easy to get up and running and, and kind of get that show going, get that idea, go, idea going. But anybody who's done even a Blab show, let alone what we're trying to do or what Stephen Haywood does on a weekly basis, where you're kind of one man band and uh it's not easy i mean mark you know even on blab i mean you're not only paying attention to talking to the audience you know one-on-one looking in the camera which is very important but also i'm looking at the comments down here trying to keep you know stay a keep a hold of that uh you're also concerned with your guests you know if people are coming in and out staying on track with and doing a lot of multitasking in your head and i know you work in in television and multitasking is kind of part of the process but it, you know i always like debate with people I, it's not really true multitasking it's more like fast switching of different tasks and what you're doing next but yeah that's a, that's a huge challenge to make it look easy it takes a lot of practice i mean we we're 22 shows in i'm still looking around now. i'm switching the show here from shot to shot and with the graphics and things and so i'm trying to make it look like i'm mr seamless here and i've got a couple of different more steps i gotta go to make it even better i think stephen haywood does a tremendous job when when you know the techbuzz.net when he does his shows he's really got it down um but hopefully we'll get to, the, get to that level but yeah i mean it's there's a challenge there right with the whole production the quality of the content and the quality of the production And again, if somebody just jumped on and they're catching us midstream, we're talking a big vision where we want to be ultimately with this show that I'm talking about, uh, the Mark and Macy show, BTS Live, your show. So we're talking big picture. We're talking about you got to have, got to know where you are right now. You got to be building and grounded in the moment and taking that next step. But hey, it is great and it's beneficial to have a vision to have a big picture vision, to have a dream, to think about, hey, I want this to be there someday. 
And that's what we're talking about right now. So talked about the social media and the website. Let's talk about the show again, the, all the technical operational aspects want to have in line and have it to be first rate. Okay. Staples of the show. We, we want to develop a brand here. We want to develop uh, some portions of the show that, that I think are extremely important to build an audience and build a brand that is distinguishable, that people can count on. Oh, they're the people that do this. He's the guy that says that. Um, it, it may seem a little bit of a shtick, but at the same time, it's, it's part of the brand building that, that people can latch on to. We talked about it from day one on this show that there is so much competition out there, you have to distinguish yourself. There are zillions of choices out there, and you don't want your best content to be buried and you don't want your personality and what you could bring to the table to be buried. So you need to find a way to hook an audience and you can still have quality content. It's not being it's not about being a clown or having a shtick. Mm -hmm. You can still have quality content, but you need to figure out ways in which you're going to stand out. And, and, and I'll, I'll let you continue that because I, I know where you kind of where you're going with this. But yeah, I mean, that's that raises a good point. I mean, you know, you're not. And also, I think people are so. I think way too um, concerned with what everyone else is doing. So, like you, Mark, you do a sports talk show, right? And and there's other sports talk shows out there on various platforms, various medium. But you know, if you're into sports, I mean, most people don't listen to just one show and say, "Oh, you know, I listen to this show and I can't be bothered with any other show." No, that's not how it works. You know they're going to listen to multiple shows because they're into that particular topic. But and and I and I think you know why. But I'm going to throw it out to you. Why do you think that is? Why why would someone want to listen to multiple shows about the same topic? You certainly gain different perspectives, and not everybody can be a hundred percent in every category. Meaning. I listen to different people, watch different people with a thought that, hey, this guy's hilarious. This person over here, not as funny, but he really knows what he's talking about and has a unique perspective on things. And then there are combinations of, of those things. So depending on what you're looking for, I'm typically looking for, I'm looking to be educated and to increase my knowledge, but I also want to be entertained and I want it to be kind of poignant. Uh, uh, what, what I'm listening to. I want the insight, the perspective to have <laughs> a little bit of thought behind it and to drive home a thought. And that's what I aim for uh, on my channel, on uh, Mark Rogers TV, to provide some perspective that's uh, a little bit unique and a little bit thought-provoking beyond the surfacy um, analysis that you're going to get when you're just flipping through all the main networks and we've talked about that I, I i'm able to niche down and, and yep. really grind away at at some subjects and some uh, teams and conferences and debates that uh are just too too narrowed down that that uh, can't be touched by the main networks and, and i would also add mark i mean i, I think this is kind of what you're getting at, getting at too i mean you you happen to be very very knowledgeable you talk a lot about college football and you're very very knowledgeable you're a fan of you're kind of a student of the game you're a fan of the of the game but also the importance of letting your personality show through, whether that's with, you know, whether that's solo or with a co-host. Uh, and I think a lot of people um, are fearful of the fact that, oh, I'm not good enough or, oh, nobody's going to like me. You know, no, it's, it's instead of, you know, trying to be someone that you're not or trying to imitate someone else or copy someone else. It's so, so and, and, and I'm not saying anything you, you know, you haven't heard before. But it's so, so important if you can just get to the point where you can just be yourself, it's much more important that you attract the audience meant for you versus trying to be something that you're not comfortable with or putting on an act. I mean, people can kind of see right through that. And, you know, and everybody's, oh, nobody's going to want to listen to me. It's like you, you will attract the right audience. I, I've seen it with other shows that, that I watch on a regular basis. I've seen people do it that way and they end up attracting a very high quality audience. And same thing with you, Mark. I mean, you, the way you've done it with, uh, you know, with Macy on Blab and, and, and how you've built your show out, you completely understand. And even with doing YouTube videos for, 
you know, what, five or six years now, you know, uh, you know, you're very true to yourself, you know, as far as, and then you see the response coming back, you're building an audience that is meant for you, that is attracted to what you're about, you know, and that's, that's so important. I mean, you're, again, you're not the only sports person out there, but you certainly have an audience, you know, and, and you don't have any trouble attracting the right people and you're engaged and all that stuff. And I mean, I, I, you know, and, and you're patient with it. <laughs> you know, certainly you've been doing it for many years. Well, there's you know. a buzzword that you hit me with uh, very early on, thought leadership. And, and you told me, okay, you know what you're talking about. And those few people that are listening to you at this point, they know that you bring quality content to the table. Just just other people don't know it. So you have to bring, uh, build that thought leadership. There's the ESPNs out there, and you can fill in the blank, that have automatic thought leadership regardless of who's on the screen that may not know what they're talking about there's an instant credibility there with the brand i didn't have that i don't have that to a certain extent now except for those people that have engaged with my my video content for uh, a period of time but marty drove home the thought of you need to build your thought leadership and, and that's going to be proven over time um, to the people that that in gauge with with your content and that's also going to be proven by the people and the relationships that you build and the people that validate your work out there and that's another aspect of the social media thing yeah and you're touching on the term thought leader uh the thing that i i would recommend people not doing is putting something like that in your bio you know <laughs> in your online bio because i mean that's for me that's not a self-described term, you know. Same thing with expert. Same thing with you know, um, I mean, guru or whatever or or influencer. That's another good one. Um, to me, all those terms, all those kind of judgments are for other people to make, you know. So what you're doing, what you're describing, Mark, is you have a certain degree of knowledge, you know. For you, it's sports, college football. It's it's also being on air. You've done that. We we did that in previous show. We so showed some of your on air, you know, um, talents back uh, in the '90s when you were um, with a couple with a um, a uh, affiliate down south, you know, during the Mississippi State basketball run to the Final Four. We we showed that. Um, I think it was two weeks ago, you know. So you have done the work. You know, you work at ESPN, so you've done the work, and I think that's a lot of it too. Is, you know, do the work, <laughs> you know, and then put it out there, and then share share your knowledge, and then we'll see if you influence anybody. You know, is you know, I have I I'm influenced by plenty of people. I'm influenced by by Mark, you know, being an on air professional. I'm influenced by Stephen Haywood, who's in the Blab chat room. Um, I think he is. He might have. Yeah, there he is. Uh, I'm influenced by Stephen Haywood, who does the TechBuzz.net. You know, at his level of production and content. You know, he's not calling himself an influencer. I'm calling him because I'm calling him an influencer because I'm influenced by him. And whether I influence someone or not, that's up to them to decide. You know, so um, I think that's Mark. I think he hit a very very important topic. Is that you? Again, I've done this for a while. You put your stuff out there. You have those conversations, and I know you're influencing people, you know, others, college football fans, other sports fans, or, let's, or else they wouldn't be watching your content, or they wouldn't even be engaged. I mean, you have some of the greatest comments on YouTube. I mean, you know, you could tell those in-depth comments. That takes a lot of, that takes effort for people to do, you know, for people to put that down. So that's how you tell. You know, they might, people aren't necessarily going to go out and say it. But you could tell, you know, and you could tell, oh, that's, that's really gratifying that at least you're maybe having an impact on someone else. You know. Well, since we're a little bit pushed on time, I'm mm -hmm. going to get through, uh, and, and I basically said most of what I'd like to say, but I'd really, again, like to focus back on the show. We've talked a lot of social media websites. We've talked a lot of periphery stuff. But in terms of making a first-rate show, uh, technically, operationally, we talked about the content, uh, producing the show, past what we currently do, really preparing and researching and investigating and come up, come, uh, coming up with... Uh, meaningful topics, uh, doing in-person shows. That's something we're going to pursue very shortly um, to give that a different feel, to give that a different look. And it's just a completely different dynamic that I think people will enjoy to do some in-person shows. So right now we're, we're several hundred miles uh, apart. Love to do some feature segments. 
So in addition to the weekly show, some segments where uh, we're promoting the show, we're talking about special topics. We did have a former New York Giants Super Bowl champion on and just did a segment with him. So that was a segment uh, that uh, was just produced separately uh, in addition to our weekly show. Uh, some, some really fun contents uh, segments where we do, um, I don't know, I'll throw out a free throw shooting contest where we're just out there having fun and people get to see a different side of us and, and just can enjoy something kind of goofy, something kind of fun. Uh, the guests, we've gotten off to a great start inviting quality guests on. Pat Muldowney, uh, Fox uh, Sports Social Media, Kelly Rippin, a news anchor in Nashville, uh, had a guy that created the fan media network he was on this week an nfl draft expert with nfl draft bible we've had some great guests and we plan to have some more there so that's going to bring credibility you get great guests on use the relationships that you have use the contacts that you have and even if you think the contact is just minimal that you've only spoken to this person once or maybe you haven't spoken to them at all Make the contact with that person. If they're going to bring credibility to your show and be um, kind of a twofold benefit, they're going to bring great content and what they have to say, but also bring you some credibility. Go after those great guests to get on your show. Well, you mentioned well. Pat Maldowney. We got to get him on the show. He yes. he was a guy that we both work with at ESPN. I remember. I think he actually reported to me at one stage in his career. So I think that's why he's nice to me. <laughs> so, but but Pat's been doing some great things. He was always he was an early adopter of social media. You know, uh, not a lot of people at ESPN were back in those days. But he's moved on to Fox Sports, as you mentioned. And I don't know if you saw this, Mark. He's been doing some more. He's been doing some of this on-air stuff with Fox, like on that. the digital channels. I'm yeah. Pat is getting it done out there. And he, he's yes, out in he LA. Is. He's living the Hollywood lifestyle. But we gotta. <laughs> Pat is fantastic. Pat is great, and we got to get him on on BTS Live because I think people will really get a kick out of Pat and and his kind of his journey. I mean, he's really oh. he started from nothing, and he's <laughs> he's a natural. I mean, he's he's great on the digital platform. That's what's great about these digital platforms. You can get a chance to kind of show your stuff, right? Oh, so th this guy's running 100 miles an hour, as Marty knows. But, hey, when, when I contacted him recently to be on the Mark and Macy show and also BTS Live, Oh, absolutely. He will absolutely be on our show. He will just need to make the time, and we'll just have to find the, the right fit in terms of scheduling. But that, that will be one to watch, believe That'll me. That'll be epic. <laughs> yes. Uh, the other things I wanted to hit on, again, getting back to the look of the show, the open music, intro, tease, getting all that down to make it look first rate to tighten the show for about 15 weeks i hit record and said hey welcome to the mark and macy show blah 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 well it's it's gone much better doing a cold open with a tease and really giving it a little bit of uh personality a little bit of a spin and letting people know what's what's coming up on the show immediately right out of the gate so got to clean that up we just had a um a graphic built for the show uh, choosing between three or four concepts. So that's going to uh, clean things up a little bit. Again, I, I love the idea of feature segments to enhance the content, to support the content that's different than watching the Mark and Macy show. Yep. That's, so whether it's goofy or if it's a, a special uh, segment with somebody else or whatever it is. Get on the radio. If, if you've got radio contacts, we'd love to get to a point uh, with the two of us where we're doing radio shows and, and going on radio shows, going on other people's podcasts. Uh, I was on an L.A. podcast a few weeks ago uh, promoting this show, promoting my show with Macy, promoting Mark Rogers TV. So those are invaluable uh, to get to that point. And maybe Macy and I doing a podcast in addition to our online show maybe we do at some point we do a podcast as well and just a strictly audio podcast and sponsors advertising partnerships i'll just throw that out there and then the very last thing i'm going to say is that the ownership of the show the content now this would be an interesting place to arrive is we own the show we own the content we make the decisions do we get to a place, and this would be a great issue to have, a great decision to have to make, do we have a Yahoo, an SB Nation, a Bleacher Report, and ESPN saying, 
hey, we want you to do a show for us. And then we kind of lose control. But we got a paycheck, we got a platform, we've got everything, but we've we've lost control. We don't have control anymore. Yeah, that's a tough one, I know. <laughs> I mean, I know we talked about that in the past, Mark, uh, you know, trying to make money directly from this is is a tall order, no question about it. You know, there's there's a lot of content being produced and you know, a lot of it is I, I kind of look at the um, the American Idol model, right? So uh, there's been a lot of, and that show just ended a uh, uh, long run. And, you know, I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give one example, Carrie Underwood, you know, who won one of the years back and she's a well-known country star, right? But I remember when she auditioned for the show, she was just a farm girl from, I forget where, Kansas or whatever it was, not known at all, great voice, great personality, great look. Um, and you know, if it wasn't for that show and, and having that connection, you know, that taking that step, she might still be on the farm, you know, singing to nobody, singing to the cows, you know, but I mean, she is incredibly talented and she took that step and she did really well. She won deservedly. So and now she's a mega star in country, you know, so, and you know, again, you know, you talk about social, it's kind of making that step, putting your content out there, making that connection. You don't know. And even what you, when you, you've gotten some opportunity now to, you know, work with some other sites, some other larger sites, maybe larger audiences and kind of working together, getting your content out there. They get the, they get your content. Then you get some of the audience, you know, and kind of building it from there. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's more of a, probably a hybrid model because I agree. I think today, you know, you can certainly have control, and that's the beauty. You don't need a gatekeeper to put out content. We're doing our show now. Nobody's giving us permission other than ourselves to do this. You know, so, you know. So, two points I have along mm -hmm. those lines, as you well know, there was a point in which I decided to to not do every video segment solo and to bring on. I was going to use the term influencers, but we kind of banned uh -oh. that for the, for, for the <laughs> Be careful. So to, so to bring on bloggers. So, for example, I'm a college football guy, and I, I think I'm pretty credible, but there are people that cover the Michigan football team every day. They know more about the Michigan football team than I do. I bring them on, and Marty knows how I've uh, built this out. So now I've got a network of 75 bloggers that I can go to that are highly credible, have professional platforms, a great majority of them on SB Nation. So now I've gotten to the point where I don't have anybody on that isn't going to give me a guarantee that they're going to post my video to their platform where it's going to generate a pretty high level of views. It's just not going to happen anymore. We're not doing this for fun. And the second part of that, as Marty knows, uh, I let him know, and, and this needs to be built out. I've, I've finally gotten to a point where, where somebody's offering a dollar or two to, to buy my content. Yep. And, and, and again, Mark, that didn't happen overnight. I mean, you know, you've been doing this for a while. You're a person that has legitimate, you know, paid on-air experience at the local level. You've also done work on the digital platforms of ESPN highlights. So, I mean, you, you know, you have the experience, you have the credibility, <laughs> no question about it. But it's like that Carrie Underwood example. I mean, she has credibility, you know, on the farm, you know, and she has the talent. If nobody knows about it, then it, it, then it's never going to get out there. Same thing with you. You have the talent, skill, credibility. You've done it in the past. Uh, but if nobody knows about it, that's what's great about all these digital platforms then it's very difficult to kind of take that next step. And, and, and also, you know, we talked about the two P's, patience and persistence. And you certainly had both, you know, and I think it's starting to pay off now. I mean, I know the opportunity you're referring to, you know, and that's not easy to get to where, you know, someone's actually willing to pay you directly for content you're producing to have content on their particular site, you know? So that's very, very exciting, you know, but that's what can happen Again, if you stick with it, you know, and, and and we talked a lot about, you know, the the ability to do that. And a lot of it has to do with loving what you're talking about and knowing something about the subject matter. And we talked about that when you first started, right? You know, we kind of niche down and make sure that, okay, the first question I asked you, Mark, is would you do it for free? 
you know, and you said yes, and then we were off and running because I knew that you'd stick with it, and and you, now now you're starting to see some of the payoff for yeah. that, you know. All right, good stuff. So All that's right. where we would like to get to. Excellent. Someday, and so uh, and we've been forward. going for a while here. So I'm going to wrap this up. I just want to uh, mention a couple things. Um, let me go to my other shot here. Oops, wait. There we go. That's better. Um, just direct to a couple couple of uh, places here. We uh, stream this show in HD on btslive.com. That's our landing. Right now it's a landing page, um, but eventually it'll be a full-fledged site. I don't know what to say it, but eventually it will be. But we stream on that site 24-7. We are streaming the show right now on there. And then when we're not live, we're streaming replays uh, as well. So btslive.com is our home on the web. Uh, another um, uh, thing I want to make mention is our Facebook group, uh, facebook.com slash groups slash BTS live show. I know Brad's been great about putting the link in the comments the whole time. Um, so if you're on Facebook, search BTS live show and you'll, you'll see the group there. Everyone is more than welcome. It's, uh, we, we post about the show and, um, you know, we welcome people to submit possible topics for shows. We love to interact with everybody while we're not live uh, during the week. And that's a great group of people, small, but growing. The other uh, person I wanna make mention, and, and uh, I, I tell him I, I, I'll do this every show because I respect the heck out of him, uh, is Stephen Haywood and the techbuzz.net. Now, Stephen usually does his show on Mondays and Tuesdays. Monday night, he does a weekly roundup, which is 6 p.m. Eastern, and then Tuesday, uh, Broadcast Now, which is a broadcasting show, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern. Right now he's in um, California on business. So he um, will be um, not doing the show this week, no live shows this week on the techbuzz.net, but come back next week. Uh, uh, I've been fortunate to be a frequent guest on his show and uh, all great stuff. And he's really the inspiration for what I do. Uh, he does it at the highest levels. And I'll always talk about Steven. Uh, he's a tremendous, not only a talented person, uh, uh, producer, but a tremendous person as well, just as a person. So, um, so definitely check that out. And uh, Mark, I'll leave it at this. I know I teased last week about uh, something I'm going to be involved with later in this year, an international opportunity. I don't think the website is up yet, but I will mention that um, I've been uh, invited uh, to speak in Germany uh, this October at the Video Summit Leipzig. Leipzig, Germany, <laughs> which uh, it'll be my first time actually in Europe, um, so that'll be interesting. Um, but I'll leave it at that. It's it's a long way to go. I have, I don't have a lot of details. I know that I'll be moderating. Uh, my wife is actually going too misty. Um, I'll be moderating a panel. Uh, uh, there's a two-day conference. I'll, I think day one I'll be moderating the closing keynote panel. Uh, about social media and video, and also be doing a uh, another presentation, uh, probably a breakout session, somewhere along the line. Details to be determined. Uh, as soon as I have, as soon as the website is up, but the speaker page is not up yet. Uh, but I'll be talking about that as we go through the rest of the year here, and uh, hopefully we'll get some video of that, and that'll be exciting. So. Um, Anyways, um, so I think, Mark, that'll do it for this week. Uh, another edition of BTS Lives in the books. It was, it was tech, tech, uh, tech challenges free, I guess, tech issues free. So, um, and we can hear you and all that stuff. So I think this is the first show we got on, you got you on, and <laughs> there was no issues at all. I think we're, we're on a good, good spot here, so. Yes. All right, everyone. Thanks for uh, jumping on here. Appreciate it. Absolutely. I'm going to um, uh, cut out here. And uh, thanks, everyone, for, for coming. Uh, we will see you again next week. For those in Blab, just stay there. I'll pop in as soon as we do this close. But uh, we will see you next week on btslive.com.